Hello, everybody, and welcome to lesson 4.6, which is on inequalities in one triangle. And what the word inequality means is that something isn't equal, which makes sense, right? The sign for it is less than or greater than. And I don't even know if we're going to use these two signs in this lesson. I just want to make sure you understand what the word means. There are inequalities in triangles and mostly the sides are not always equal. One is smaller, one is larger, and the same with the angles. They don't always have to be equal. Um, one is larger, one is smaller, and we're deciding where in the triangle is the biggest angle and where is the biggest side. And so that's what we're learning in this lesson. And by the way, this lesson is on page 239 in your textbook. That's where we're starting. Okay. And so on this first page, let's look at what that uh, text box in the middle says, essential understanding. The angles and sides of a triangle have special relationships that involve inequalities. Like I said, some are bigger, some are smaller. You're going to figure out which side or angle is bigger or smaller. Notice the symbols right here. Yeah, this means a number is greater than zero means it's positive. Um, and this is a number is greater than another number. Yeah, so that's ordering numbers. That's how we order numbers with these symbols. And this is how we can tell a number is positive. If a number is negative, you're starting with a number C and say it's less than zero. That means negative. Okay, that's all I'm going to do on this page. So we're switching over to the next page, 240. And we're starting on the top. Okay, corollary, which is an extra afterthought to the triangle exterior angle ther theorem. Remember the exterior angle is the sum of the both of these two remote interior angles. That's what we learned so far. And here it says, so I'm gonna put that here. When it says read, you, that means study it. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of each of its remote interior angles. Why is that? If this angle is the sum of these two, this one has to be bigger than each one of them. Let me make an example. If this is 100 degrees, this is 20 degrees, this is 80 degrees. Yeah, 20 plus 80 is 100. Doesn't it make sense that this number has to be bigger than either one of these two numbers? Otherwise, it couldn't be the sum. That's what this is talking about. And here how we read it, angle one is an exterior angle, measure angle one is greater than measure angle two, and measure angle one is also greater than measure angle three. Notice the symbols are similar, so you have to be very careful. This means angle, and this is greater than. So when you write your symbols, be careful that your angle is very flat on the bottom, the symbol, yeah? And this one is like an arrow, okay? So let's go to the bottom of this page. We're going to do number, excuse me, one. It, it, it says explain why measure angle one is greater than measure angle two, which by the way, this is not a remote interior angle. The remote interior angles are these two because it says remote interior angles. And this is not an interior angles. So one is the sum, so measure angle one is the sum of measure angle three plus the measure of angle four. Yeah, 
3 plus 4 adds up to angle 1. But you notice that 3 and 2 are equal. Why? Why are those two equal? Because they're called vertical angles, and vertical angles are always equal. So 3 is the same as 2. Well, if 3 is the same as 2, you can substitute 2 for 3. Yeah? And so if 3 and 2 can be substituted, that means, so I can say, though, therefore, this little symbol means, therefore, measure angle 1 is equal to measure angle 2 plus measure angle 4. Yeah, because I'm substituting. Here's the substitution, the 3 get substituted with the two because they're equal, because they're vertical angles. So when something is equal, equal, you can substitute it. So now we have two and four is the, the makes up angle one. Well, that means that measure angle one has to be greater than measure angle two. Because if these two added up together equal that one, both of these have to be smaller than that one. Or other, other way around, this one has to be bigger than either one of these two. Okay, this page 240, go to the next page 241. You can always stop the video to make sense of problems. On the top, we have something very interesting. It just says theorem 33, so that doesn't say much. If two sides of a triangle are not congruent or not equal, then the larger angle lies opposite the longer side. Here's the important part. The larger angle is opposite the longer side. So if this is a side, xc, this side, is bigger than xy, than this side, then angle y is bigger, wait, this is wrong, hang on, xc is greater than xy. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, so that means this is the bigger side. So this side is bigger, yeah? then this angle is the bigger one. And xy is smaller, so this angle is the smaller one. In other words, the bigger angle is opposite the longest side. So this angle y is the biggest one because the side is smaller. Ah, very confusing. Hopefully you'll get it when we do our questions. So let's look at the question on the bottom of this page. Hopefully this will make more sense. Um, list the angles of each triangle in order from smallest to largest. Notice the side lengths. You're looking for the longest side that has the biggest angle on the opposite side. So opposite of the longest side is the bigger angle, the biggest angle. So I'm going to start with angle K is greater than, now this is, looks the same, right? I, I should write is greater than. I'll just say is the biggest instead of the symbols. They're confusing. Angle. Because it's opposite of the biggest side or the longest side. So that's your longest side. So that's your opposite is your biggest angle. So let's look at the second longest side. We're putting it in order, right? So the second longest side is KM. 
So the angle opposite is this angle L. So I'm gonna say angle L is second largest angle because it's opposite the second largest side. And then we have the third side so these two I got, and the third side is the smallest side. So the angle that's opposite the smallest side is this angle M is the smallest. I'll shorten it angle because it is, so that's how you write it's opposite the smallest side. So biggest, medium, smallest. So if you order it that way, it makes the most sense because your symbols do not blend into each other. Yet I'm going to show you how to write it on a test maybe. You can write it like this on your test, but if you see it in a textbook, maybe in a textbook. And so then you're like, what is this talking about? So your order in angle K is greater than angle L and angle L is greater than angle M. Oh gosh. Do you see how confusing that looks? It looks like high, um, Egyptian hieroglyphs they call them, right? This is greater. This is the symbol for greater. And this is your symbol for angle. They look so much alike. Anyways, this is a good way to write it, I think. You don't have to constantly write everything twice, but I wanted to write it down for you one time at least, okay? Okay, so that's how you can tell which is the biggest angle. You look for the longest side and opposite that is the biggest angle. All right, next page. We have page, we're skipping to, do we? Okay, then no, we are not skipping anything. We have to go to the, mm, well, I'm just looking at five here because you don't have all the angles. So, oh, wait, this one I wanna do. Theorem 34, they don't give it names, they give it a number. It's kind of like in Utah where my daughter lives, all the streets have numbers, it's so boring. South 107th Street, every street. And then you have to look. Anyways, if two angles of a triangle are not congruent, that's if they're not the same measure, then now it's the opposite. The longer side lies opposite the larger angle. So you have your angle measure, you know where the longest side is. So biggest angle has the longest side across. So it's just backwards of what we just learned, right? Okay, so make sure you read that as well. And we're going on to this page, which is page 243 and you're on top and it's asking you to list the sides in order from shortest to longest. Oh, did I do that right on that previous page? Oh, well, I didn't see that. Smallest to largest. I started, I did largest to smallest. We have to read Oops. Uh, okay, so no, see, you have to start with the smallest angle, but that's okay. I mean, it's not, but 
you still got the right idea, I think. But we need to check our questions carefully. That's always important. List the sides. Now we're listing sides of each triangle. Well, there's only one in order from shortest to longest. So I have to find this angle. It's 90 here. That's a right angle. So that makes the 60. Because 60 plus 30 plus 90 is 180. So now I know all three angles. So now I can tell the biggest or the longest side is across. The, the medium would be this one. And this is the shortest because it's across from the 30 degree. But now I'm going to list them. The longest, oh no, I'm starting with the shortest. TU is shortest. Is shortest side. because it's opposite or across smallest angle. Okay, I'm not going to write that each time. I'm just going to order them. Then the middle one is UV is middle. Length and the longest is TV. So it's just reversed. You're looking for the biggest angle and you go across and you find the longest side. Yeah, it's a cross. Okay, on the bottom here. Oh, this is interesting. You know, there's only certain numbers that can actually form a triangle. If you have not the right lengths for each side, you will not be able to close that triangle and make that top, like that top corner. So look at number, this picture right here, yeah? So if you have this length, six centimeters, and you have two sticks, let's say these are sticks, right? Like matches or something. And you have two that are just two centimeters. If you would wanna make a triangle, it won't work because they're not long enough. So if you would think you're gonna fold them in, you're not ever going to meet in the middle because you would end here and here, right? Like you bring that down and you bring that down, it would not have that other corner. Whereas this, works. You have the five here and then three and three and you're able to build a triangle. So some numbers work and some don't. So here's the rule. This is called the triangle inequality theorem. So what that means is that if you add, I'm just going to write it here, if you add any two sides of a triangle, the third side has to be bigger than that sum. So that's what this means. You add two sides, it has to be bigger than the third side, but you have to do it three times. Must do it three times because you have to add each two side and check if it's bigger than the third time. Three times, that's how often you have to perform that operation, okay? The sum of the length of any two sides, so you can pick any two sides of a triangle, has to be greater 
than the length of the third side. If you look here, three plus five, three plus five is greater than this side, right? Because it's eight, eight is bigger than three. And I'm gonna do the other five plus three. Five plus three has to be greater than the third side, which is three. That's true also, five plus three is eight, eight is bigger than three. And then I have to do it one more time. I'll take these two, three plus three, has to be greater than the third side, which is five. Three plus three is six, six is greater than five. So this one works, but this one doesn't because two plus two is not greater than six. So that already doesn't work, you see? That's four. Four is not greater than six. That means is not greater than six. So that will not form a triangle. So that's what you're going to learn now. And the next page, we're gonna try this out. We're gonna see if what forms a triangle. Uh, wait, where are we? Using the triangle inequality theorem, there we are. Can a triangle have the sides with a given length? Explain. How can you determine if the length can form a triangle? Add any two sides and see if answer is bigger than third side. And you have to do that three times. You have to check all three, okay? So you want that to be bigger. Okay, so two, six, and nine. Two plus six, two plus six is eight. Eight has to be bigger than nine. Two plus six is eight. And eight is not bigger than nine, right? No, will not. Once you find one that doesn't work, you can quit. Okay, four, six, and nine yards. So I'm adding four plus six, it's 10, and 10 is greater than the third side, nine, yes. Okay, but we have to do all three. Six plus nine, so I'm adding six plus nine is, six plus nine is 15, and 15 is greater than the third side, which is four, yes. Okay, then we have four plus nine is 13 and 13, which one did I use? Four and nine, 13 is bigger than six, yes. Yes, these lengths will form a triangle. Okay, that's how you check. And then you can try, can the triangle have sides with the given length? Look at it, two plus three is five, five is not greater than six. This one is no. Okay, let's see what's on this page. We have on page 245, I'm gonna do this one. Oh yeah, so if you know two length, so a lot of the questions will ask that, the length of two sides of a triangle are giving, given. So you only have two lengths. You got, let's say 18 and let's say 23. You wanna know what are the possible side lengths of the third side, right? Find the range of possible lengths for the third side. The key is range. A range is always a, um, a several numbers that work. So when you write a range, you have a starting point and an ending point. Numbers from here to here will work. And here's how you do it. You only have to do these two operations. Once you add them and then you subtract them, but you have to subtract the bigger number minus the smaller number. So 18 plus 23, 
is 18 plus 23 is 41. And I'm gonna make that red because that's our upper, upper bound. And then you subtract, but remember when you subtract, you wanna take the bigger number minus the smaller number and that's five and that's your lower bound. So at the range, <clears throat> you take the lower number and then you say that's, so, uh, that's less than, so you reverse your symbol. Then let's call this side X. And that number is less than 41. This is called a range, okay? X is length of missing side. Okay, so that means the length of the third side can be any number greater than five, not equal to, notice it doesn't have an equal sign has to be greater than five and less than 41. So this is the answer that you might wanna write on a test to make it easy on yourself. This is the answer like you see it in a textbook in algebra form. Okay, let me give you an example. I want you to pick any number and I'm going to, of course, do it for you between five and 41. Let's say I pick 10. Let's say I say, okay, my side length could be 10. Let's try it. Yeah, a number between five and 41 is 10, am I right? So let's do our test. 18 plus 23 is 41, 41 is bigger than 10. 10 plus 23 is 33, 33 is bigger than 18. 18 plus 10 is 28, 28 is again bigger than 23. So 10 works. You can pick any number between five, but not taking the five because it's not equal to, we don't have these. So that means five is excluded because if you take five, I'll show you that. If you would pick five, guess what will happen? Say I say, okay, I'm using five. 18 plus five is 23 and 23 is not bigger than 23. It has to be bigger, right? And it's not, it's equal, right? So five won't work. You'll get a straight line. You're not, the triangle won't make a tip. So five doesn't work. That's why you don't include the endpoints. I'm gonna write that down. Don't include the endpoints. Okay, so that's how you test. You add them and then you subtract them and that'll give you the range. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Now we're starting our homework. The next page is 246 and you're starting with number 12. So you're looking at this picture, I believe. And you look, uh, you have to find the angles, I think. No, which side is, oh, I'm skipping 11. Which angle is the smallest? Remember these two form a straight line. Oh, well you can tell because your sides. Oh, they do need the side. Okay, I'm gonna have to sign this one too. Okay. So 13, can a triangle have the side length four, five, and six? And you remember the sum of any two has to be bigger than the third side. 14, error somewhere. Errors, explain why that's not possible. And then on the next page on top, 15. 
It is, is it possible to draw a right triangle, which is a right 90 degree angle? Yeah, 90 degree angle triangle with an exterior angle measure of 88 degrees. Is it possible? I think you see already that it's not, but the answer is no, by the way. But why? You have to explain that. This is an exterior angle, okay? Here's the important part. Number 17, algebra. This one is probably the toughest. I'm going to check that one for sure. There's not enough room. You can use this space. Okay. First of all, draw a triangle. You can, I would even use this one because we don't really do that question. So just use this triangle here and then label it ABC. and just ignore the right angle. And then measure angle A is 70, B is 2X minus 10, and C is 3X plus 20. So start like that, always a diagram. Remember, if you add all of these together, the sum is 180. So there's your equation. You gotta write an equation and solve. Because anytime there's X's involved, you have to write an equation. There's no way around it. Step two, find each angle measure because you substitute the X back in and find the angle measure. And then you can answer the question. and then find the longest side. So there's your steps, yeah? So the, the equation comes from here. Remember this plus this plus this is equal to 180. Find, solve it, find your X, plug them back in so you know each angle measure and then decide which is the longest side. The longest side is across from the largest angle. All right, and then I still have more. I have decided to give you number 25 on the next page, which is not that easy either, but it's a probability question. What's the probability if you have two straws, one is six and one is nine centimeter, and she picks a third straw at random, and there's four straws, and which one does she need to pick to build a triangle, and what are the chances of picking that straw? You can write your answer in percent. Okay, so that's it. Good luck. <laughs>